Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks. Today's project is a continuation of the last pair that I couldn't do from the last video. I finally got in what I needed to get so I can get the project done. And um, I'm going to show you guys what that's all about. Susie, come on. Come here. Say hello, everybody. He's being shy today. So he's keeping me company today. Over there, look. There's the camera. Oh, you don't know what the camera is, do you? All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> so that's what the pattern is going to be. It's like a broken glass is what it's called. All right. Now we're just going to make some heel bases. You guys remember most of those heel bases that we took apart were fiberboard also um, plastic on one pair these are uh, these are JR leather you don't need too many layers it's not a it's not a very tall heel so two layers plus the top lift is is all it needs is that's it I guess I should put my apron on, huh? Sometimes I get lazy about that. And I was reading some funny comments about the bottom finishes. How I buy them like that. Really? Just because I don't show you guys how I do it doesn't mean that I don't do it. It's just a stencil. Okay, that's all it is. It's a stencil. Put it on top. You spray a couple layers. And voila, that's what you get. Nobody does it. I do it. It's my job. Somebody else was doing it. I would tell you that somebody else was doing it. Okay? Crazy people. All right, we've cleaned the uppers on these and the cork is in. I've got to re-glue the sides here. I took that apart because I didn't like the way it was kind of sitting there. So, But these are all nice and prepped, ready to go. Once I finish stamping these soles with the Floorsham logos and my logo, then we can go ahead and glue it on the, glue it on the shoe. All right, let's continue. So you guys know most of the Floorshams come with a V-cleat like this, right? Some of them are inserted into the heel some of them are on the edge like that depending on which year it was built now this customer asked for two v cleats okay some of the models do have those two v cleats on there just like that now we can simply cut a v shape notch out that rubber piece and insert this in there but we want to make this a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I like the. There goes the other one. I like difficult things. Anyway, as I was saying, we're going to mimic this pattern right here. See how it's kind of in from the edge? That's what we're going to do here. We're going to open some triangle pieces and insert that in there flush. It's easier said than done. So at this stage right here, I've temporarily glued the top lift to get that shape, that balance. See the heels kind of scalloped. You see that? Our our bottom of our heels are not flat. They're kind of curved a little bit. So in order for to get that curve on the inside as well, this is a little notched out. So when this kind of sits in there, just like that, it gives it a little bit of a dip for that heel foot to sit in there comfortably that's why we not we kind of scallop this a little bit on the inside of the heel you see that all right let's continue oh these are stamped ready to go need to be touched up a little bit this is called debossing okay embossing is this is heat stamp basically right debossing is pushed into the surface Embossing is raised up. 
like raised letters. So this is the correct term is debossing, but everybody calls it embossing. So, but we're gonna call it debossing because that's what it's supposed to be called. All right, let's continue. You got a party? You sure? Let's go out. Come on. Let's go. Let's go out. Come on. Come on, let's go out. Is your head hurt? Does it hurt when you turn your head? <laughs> Come on, let's go party. Let's go. Go out the door. Let's go out the front. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Alright, so we got those two V cleats in. Still needs to be cleaned up a little bit, which we will do that. Now, another problem that this presented was the thickness of the rubber heel is thicker than the V-cleat. So what happens is that we can't leave this hollow right there. Because when you nail that in, it's going to countersink the V-cleat right into the heel. It's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a little piece off here. And insert it right in there so it's nice and flush and it'll be flush once it gets nailed in all right let's continue <laughs> man my my laugh is still raspy <laughs> the heck is in this thing There's no marks on that hammer. We don't want to put a scratch on the sole, you know. God forbid. Yeah, it's not like the guy's not going to wear it. Actually, this particular customer said that he was going to put it in a showcase and not wear it. I guess you can do that if you want. It's his shoes. <laughs> I mean, they are shoes. They, they they need to be worn and enjoyed. And but if you want to put it in a showcase, it's your prerogative, my friend. They're your shoes. You can do whatever you want with them. As long as I do my part. And getting it done the way you want it, the rest is up to you. Nice. I tell you guys that these are my favorite shoes. <laughs> I forgot I still have this thing on. <laughs> I loves me. If I don't loves me, who else is going to loves me? Maybe my mama. Yes, sir. This, oh, I got to take this thing off. It's getting in my way. All right, we'll continue that later. All right, so we're getting there, slowly but surely. All right, let's continue. You know, I want to add a little bling to this shoe. I don't know what though. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a French tip on here out of the solid brass piece, but I gotta give it some sort of a some sort of a design or something. 
Hmm. I gotta figure it out. What does the question? Hmm. <laughs> well, well, well. What should we do? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe a, a curve of some sort, or two curves. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can come up with something. So we got a piece there, right? Hmm. All right, let's continue. I'll figure something out. All right, so we came up with this idea here. Not too bad. So we marked it on the brass and I'm gonna cut out the two ends with this, uh, I'm gonna clip these off here, but the rounded, these right here, I'm gonna see if I can sand those, sand those and give it that curve. All right, let's continue. Now that was a chore, man, oof. I think it's gonna look good once it gets done. It's getting there. All right, let's continue. So sometimes things happen in a job that, you know, you just have to shake your head and try again. You see the red stitches here? Right there? How it's popped up on the welt? You see that right there? Well, you're not supposed to be able to see the red stitches there. But look at it. It's popping up everywhere. It looks good on the bottom. So what happens is that I had another size thread on the machine. And I forgot to, when I changed it over to black, I forgot to, you know, put the tension back to where it was. So basically these two, these two threads, top and bottom thread, black thread and red thread, go in and inter intertwine together and then the whatchamacallit is right in the center of the sole so if one tension is too much it says let's say this is the red thread the black thread pulls it and it that comes up on the welt area or vice versa it could happen so now i've got to unstitch all that without damaging the bottom and fix the tension and stitch it again so all right, let's try this again. Let's continue. All right, now we're going to make a leather covered shoehorn for this customer. Now he doesn't know that I'm doing this for him. So this is a surprise. I'm sure he'll know once he sees the video. <clears throat> Basically, we just get a leather shoehorn, I'm sorry, a metal shoehorn. <clears throat> okay. We're going to put some broguing pattern on it. For those of you who don't know what broguing is, of course I don't have a shoe that's got broguing pattern on there. <clears throat> I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger than the actual shoehorn. <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to put a bunch of holes in it. Okay. <clears throat> Give it a little bit of a pattern. <clears throat> Okay. 
So this is the back piece, all right? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and glue that on there. Okay. <clears throat> My throat is still a little bothering me a little bit. Now, this here, these are the Baroguing tools. It's a hole puncher, basically, right? <clears throat> so what we're going to do... All right, let me go get my tool. I'll be right back. Let's continue. See, you guys, see these little patterns, those holes? Those are Baroguings. Barogues. Baroguings, what I want to call them. So we're going to try to duplicate that <clears throat> along this uh, edges of along the edges of this shoehorn. It's a little bit larger than, um, than the shoe, but it gives you the same idea, you know? <clears throat> cool, right? And underneath it, we're going to have a red piece of leather so it'll match the red insole that the customer requested, like that. <clears throat> you guys see that? Okay. <clears throat> Shoes are done, by the way. I'll show you in a minute. Take it easy. Come back. I'm gonna have this all done. Okay, let's continue. Looky, looky here. Looks good, right? It's getting there. Slowly, slowly, but surely. All right. Put this in the hole there. <clears throat> now let's see. What we got to do is basically <clears throat> stamp the floor shine stamp right in the middle of this. So we'll mark the center. All right, while that dries, we're going to glue the bottom piece on. Let me mark this hole so I can punch the hole. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, it's as easy as that. Well, this is the back piece anyway, right? I think we're going to maybe uh, maybe stitch it with red thread to match the... Oh, here's the bottom. I wasn't going to show you guys, but I guess I got no choice now. That brass plate was a pain in the ass. And got solid brass V-cleats. Oh, what was I showing you? Oh, the red thread. That's what we're going to match. <clears throat> I think that'll go kind of cool, right? And if you look here, see how you can see the colors on the on, in the holes of the broguing? If that's red, that's going to be awesome looking. All right, let's continue. Basically, I'm just making a crease on the edge of the metal so I know exactly where to sew. Just like that. <clears throat> and we're going to follow that line. Something's in there. 
something got caught in there. We don't want anything caught in the middle of the two pieces of leather. Ah, look at that, you see? That little piece there. Not good. I knew I felt a little bump. She getting there. What y'all think? This is looking all right. And then this one is going to be basically kind of like a little leather holder. Cool. Let's continue. Let's move the corner. Let's move the swing. A little edge dressing here just to kind of cover the light color edge can't put too much or else might get on the red stitching at the edges and there she goes now Now for this uh, delicate flower here, it's even more delicate. Can't get any red on or black on the red. Do we have to do this? Not really, but kind of gives it a finished look. <coughs> Now, if, if the black does get on the red, you can simply remove it with water or your spit. Gross! Hey, man, you can't be spitting on the people's stuff! Oh, God, I got on the bottom. Where do you think spit shining came from? Huh? Alright, I won't spit on it. Don't worry. <coughs> I'll let Zeus spit on it. <laughs> nah, he's around somewhere. He's probably sleeping. And just kind of wipe this down. Just like that. Pull it through. You can have the edges all cleaned up. Nice and clean. Okay? Put it through the hole. Make a little knot. <clears throat> So just to kind of hang the hang the shoehorn, you know. Okay. Pull that tight. Nice and tight, just like that. There we go. And cut the ends off. Do it on an angle like that. Turn the thread. And get the ends locked too and she's done okay not bad i like it i think the customer i've oh, got a buffet still there's some glue and stuff there but you get the idea right cool let's continue all right now basically this is going to complete the whole restoration job okay we got the shoes obviously we got the shoe horn now we're going to do a shoe tree leather covered shoe tree it's a cedar shoe tree and it's going to have the customer's name with my name we're going to cut it we're going to stitch it with red stitches finish the edges and glue it right on the cedar shoe tree okay all right well let's continue All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. Let me tell you, this toe piece 
was a pain in the rear. It took forever, forever to get that aligned. Even though still not exactly 100% symmetrical on both sides, but you know what? I'm learning as I'm going along because all this is done by hand. I had to cut it, sand it, trim it, you know, uh, drill the holes. You know, this was this was the this is the second time, maybe the third time I've done this. No, the second time. The first time was um, Preston shoes. This is the second one that I've done that curved like this. Now it turned out pretty good. Now along the way, I had the steel V cleats in there. Okay. I figured, you know what? This gentleman told me that he was going to put it on a showcase. He wasn't going to wear it. So I said, you know what? Maybe it might not be a bad idea to do the gold, the brass, just like the tips, instead of the steel. Now, even though if he's going to wear it, it still will wear pretty good. It's not, uh, it's not too bad. It's a little bit softer than the steel, yes, but still he'll get some, uh, he'll get some good wear out of these uh, brass uh, V cleats. Um, we've got double row nails on there, the stamps, my stamp. He wanted my stamp on there. I usually don't put it on the sole, just put Florsheim Shaw Imperial and then the logo right there. He wanted the, this is basically um, the broken glass pattern. Um, that's what he requested. Um, he requested some red insoles with a new stamp and I've got my stamp in there also, Beto's Leather Works. Okay, I think that was it. I think that was basically his, his requests were, you know, met. Along with a pair of cedar shoe trees, that's his name, but I didn't want to put the, I don't know if he wants his name out there or not, but so I just covered it up, okay? And he doesn't know about this one, well, he'll know once he sees the video. It's just a shoehorn, okay? It's got Beto's Leather Works in the back. Remember I was telling you guys about the broguing pattern? And um, it's red inside there. Turned out pretty cool. I like it. And um, this was, I think, the cost was without the toe plate. Um, I think it was like five sixty-five, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. I can't recall exactly what it was. But the toe plates, the toe pieces, usually are about one twenty and up. This particular one is a little bit more work, more money, unfortunately, I've got to charge him with. Um, this, is a, this is my gift to him. There's no charge for that. These are $80 that we charge. It's a cedar shoe tree. Uh, Woodlore sells these for, I think, like 30 bucks. And then um, the rest, I'll stamp, you know, your name, my name, piece of leather, different color, whatever color leather you want to match that, to match the shoe. Um, and basically, that's about it. This is going to uh, Middle East, well, Saudi Arabia around Dubai area to be exact. Um, the gentleman contacted me through email, he said he had one. Uh, if I could restore it for him, I said, of course. You know, so he purchased it and sent it directly to me. Then we communicated through email, back and forth, pictures and ideas, prices, and he okayed everything and then um, we got it done for him. So if you guys want um, to mail me stuff, just communicate with me first, email me bedos at yahoo.com and then we'll get the job you know we'll get the ball rolling make sure that we get the directions right hey zussi zussi's here and come on come on let's see if we'll come up this come on come on good boy yeah good boy look at that look over there who's that who's that come here come over here i shot it there i don't know what's wrong with him anyway so if you want some information about my uh, my company, what I do about me, if you go into the YouTube, the main page, he's back. Come on, come up here. Come up here. Hey. Boy, he's not himself today. He ate, he went to the bathroom, he peed, he pooped. What more do you want? Anyway, um, if you want some information about uh, what I do, if you're on the main page of YouTube, you'll see a section that says about. If you click onto that, it'll just have all my address, my information. Uh, company name, email, phone number, so you can get in touch with me that way. All right, so share as much as you want. Um, subscribe if you haven't, please. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, give me thumbs up, comment, whatever you want to say. I don't care. I'll take it all. doesn't matter. All right, well, thank you for joining me again. I appreciate it, and we'll see you guys on the next project. Susie, come up here. Come on, let's say bye to the people. Come on, get up. 
All right, let's see. There you go. There you go. Come here. Let's get in the camera. Yeah. Oh, you big boy. Look at that. Okay, that's enough. I think he's had enough. All right, we'll see you guys later next time. Take care.